Russia is about to capture Kupiansk. Ukraine have two options. It's either they withdraw their forces from Kupiansk or the Russians will surround them. You see, after the Russians captured Adivka, the Russians are now capturing more territories on the battlefield. We all know that Ukraine can't offensive field completely. You know, I know it. Even Zelensky himself admitted it that Ukraine can't offensive field. Zolushinin also confirmed it. So basically, we all know that Ukraine can't offensive um, field completely. Now, after Ukraine can't offensive field, if you guys observe, it was kind of like nothing was actually happening on the battlefield, right? Boom! The Russians took Adivka, and today, the Russians are attacking everywhere on the battlefield. So Zaporozhia is under the full control of the Russians now. But Kupiansk, I spoke a lot about Kupiansk last two years. When the war started, I, I spoke a lot about Kupiansk. You know, back in the days, the Russians took Kupiansk. They took a lot of villages, um, but they decided to redraw their forces. It was a technical redrawal. And the Western America started celebrating. They saw it as a defeat. And I kept reminding you guys that it's not a defeat. It is part of the Russian style of warfare, right? Stand still, fight, destroys army. One of the main reasons why the Nazis uh, were defeated by the Russians is stand still, fight. That was one of the biggest mistakes of Adolf Hitler. So when you're fighting against Russia and you fight, you know, using this stand still, fight strategy, you are going to lose. They will definitely wipe you out. So the Russians are not interested in taking territories when they fight. They are always interested in defeating their enemy. After defeating their enemy, everywhere belongs to them. Let's use Second World War for example. You know, Crimea was once part of the Russian Empire. So in the beginning of the war, in Second World War, um, Crimea was one of the first places that the Nazis captured. The Russians didn't fight back. They allowed them to control Crimea. The Russians rather focused on defeating the Nazis. So after the Battle of Stalingrad, they didn't go to Crimea, they didn't waste time in Crimea. They went all the way to Germany, they defeated the Nazis in Berlin. After defeating them, they came back and took all their lands. <laughs> so Russia withdrawal from Kupiansk, Liman, Kherson in the beginning of the war was a strategic move, right? It's not because they were losing, but the Russians don't defend a piece of land at the expense of losing their life. Their focus is to always defeat their enemy first. After defeating their enemy, everywhere belongs to them. So what the Russians are actually doing is they are blocking all Ukraine um, supply lines. Now, Kupiansk is strategically important. If the Russians take Kupiansk, meaning Kharkiv is going to fall. Yes. Kharkiv is one of the biggest cities in Ukraine. I think the second biggest city in Ukraine, I stand to be corrected, but I think so. But basically, Kharkiv is a big city. So if the Russians take Kupiansk, automatically they are taking Kharkiv. And this is the end of Ukraine. In fact, Zelensky himself is complaining. Um, the defense minister of, um, Rush, uh, of Ukraine recently came out and said um, they need weapons. Um, they said Russia is you know winning russia is advancing um they don't have weapons to fight back so i think this is the moment that vladimir putin and the russians were waiting for hmm interesting so ukraine is still begging for this 60 billion this 60 billion is not going to make any difference on the battlefield <laughs> pentagon know this the americans know this they know very well that this money is not going to change anything you just need common sense to analyze the whole thing when the war began, Ukraine had a lot of weapons. They had close to 700,000 soldiers. They gave them over $100 billion, and yet they couldn't defeat Russia. Today, Ukraine cannot even boast of 100,000 troops. They have nothing. And they're asking for $60 billion. What is the $60 billion going to do? It's going to do nothing. It's rather unfortunate that Ukraine is paying... Um, you know the crimes of another man this war ukrainians don't deserve to die this is not their war but they decided to carry the burden well i can't blame russia they decided to fight on behalf of the western america 
this war is a blessing in disguise for the whole world no western country can support ukraine they have nothing their arsenals are empty nobody in the west no country in the west can support ukraine oh and another interesting news is the m1 abraham tanks or whatever they call it the russians have started blowing them up <laughs> interesting time ahead <laughs> russia can end this war in less than a month if they want this war to end they can end it but it is a strategic move they are keeping america busy in ukraine making it difficult for america to fight in other parts of the world currently america can't fight china they don't have weapons america can't fight iran they don't have weapons america is struggling they're out of 155 millimeter shells this f-16 or whatever they they, they 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 call it these f-16s cannot operate in ukraine the russians will blow everything up there is no magical weapon on this earth that has not been given to ukraine yet ukraine still can defeat russia it's a strategic move they want this war to continue china want the war to continue iran want this war to continue the palestinians want this war to continue everybody want this war to continue because it's keeping america busy just imagine hadn't been this russia and ukraine war just imagine just imagine by this time in taiwan what will be happening just imagine what will be happening in gaza by now just imagine what will be happening in iran by now just think about it think about it in africa today we africans some african countries are even fighting for their independence we are taking advantage of you know um the west economic hardships and some african countries are gradually becoming independent Burkina for somalia and niger we can all see everything the west have no weapons to fight them they are struggling economically militarily they have no weapons to fight them they have no option than to leave so um this war is a blessing in disguise guys um if you enjoyed the content make sure to like the video and share the video to family and friends see you in the next episode